I've been meaning to write a four-part choral piece for fretless guitar for quite a while, and today I think I'm going to do that. In other words, I'm going to write a piece for four singers, and then replace each singer with a fretless guitar. Ooh. Let's jump into MuseScore and get started. So it's going to be a very slidey, chord-rich piece. So let's call it something slidey, like Slidey Jonathan. Don't forget your hat. Nice pretentious title. And now we're going to put four vocalists. We'll have a soprano, alto, tenor, and a baritone singer. And eventually these will all just be fretless guitar. So let's start with a nice big C major spread voicing. And actually let's make it a major seven. Let's put the B here. And let's put a D in the next measure. Mm -hmm. G down to F. Um, e, we'll just jump it up to C. B, let's do B flat. Right, let's see how that sounds. Let's make that work. A B flat major seven sharp eleven. I'm trying to keep my motion between voices contrasting. So this goes down, but this go this bass goes up, and this tenor goes down, but this alto goes up. And I'm trying to keep my texture moving in this wave-like way. When you move voices that way, it's pretty forgiving. You can have lines like this. The sound. And now I'm going to have some half notes to increase the rate of motion. I like the weirdness of all these big leaps happening together. So to summarize what I did here, um, I started with a C major 7 chord and then I sort of followed my ear for what the top voice would be and then I let the chords justify each choice I made for the melody. Uh, I was thinking a lot about making sure that strange notes in the melody had very powerful accompaniment. For example, if I had a crazy A flat that kind of appears out of nowhere in the high register, I backed it up with an A flat major 7 chord that makes the A flat sound normal, relatively speaking. And then I, I put myself in the situation twice where I had the same note for three bars in the melody and then I wanted to make each time that, that you hear that note again feel like it meant something different through choices I made in the context. So we went from B flat major 7 sharp 11, the E is the sharp 11, to an F major 7 with the E being the major 7, then to a D major 9 with the E being the 9, and then we just kind of went off the rails here. I just started, uh, I just do these things. You know, everybody does the same thing. When you write, you start out with your little rules and then you start breaking them. So this whole thing is pretty strange. But I think it'll be really cool on the fretless. Let's see.